Mark, hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you too. I hope you haven't been waiting Not long. too long, not too long. I'm good. Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Have you been here before? I have not. So it's I'm a great spot. Yeah. How do you think the U.S. compares to our international counterparts in terms of support for the labs and support <clears throat> for um, advancements in technology? So, so the, the recent appropriations that just came out for fiscal year 19, if you, if you go in and study the energy and water appropriations, it's, it, it's an incredible statement to the importance of the laboratories that we got from this, both the Senate and the House, from Senator Alexander and Chairman Simpson's leadership. Uh, and so I actually feel quite good uh, about it. As a lab person, yeah, we would always say we could always use more, but I will tell you that I feel very good about the U.S. investment, research, and development. And how does that compare to, to others across the world? Um, other countries like the Chinese, for example, are really ramping up their research and development uh, investment, uh, but we're competing. And if you look at our competitive edge, it's still the labs and the universities in the U.S. That's still the competitive edge. So you think we're in a position where we can stay globally competitive? I, I, I do feel that. Um, but it's going to require sustained investment. What is the lab doing um, to keep the grid safe um, and to address cybersecurity? It's high on my list, yeah. one of my top priorities. It, it's, it's, I, I like to term it as the existential threat, right? Climate change is a serious existential threat, but cyber, cyber attack on our infrastructure is a serious issue. Yes, our expertise is in what I'll call control systems. Let me talk about that. So any system is controlled by small control, basically digital control systems, whether it be the grid, whether it be a car, whether it be something in your home, home ventilation system if you're in a more modern home, whether it be a military vehicle. There's a common technology platform that controls all of those systems. And those happen to be the most vulnerable to cyber attack. So our expertise is understanding those control systems and understanding how they can be attacked and therefore putting in place uh, ways to defend the systems. When we think about the public perception of things, a lot of folks would imagine that 100% renewables is the best way to go in the future. So when you talk to your neighbors, for example, how do you explain um, what the reality of the future actually needs to look like? It, uh, the way I try to go about it, it's, this is a hard conversation for even us who know a lot about energy to have, uh, but when you're talking to an informed neighbor, uh, you have to try to talk about all the attributes of the energy system that we need. We need it to be clean, so carbon free. We need it to be reliable, resilient, affordable, and all, all the things that go with that. And in order to do that, if you weigh all those attributes, renewables are an important part of it, but they don't provide everything. And so you hear people talk a lot about baseload, about reliable, resilient baseload. But to me, that's, 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 that's not, you don't use that term in a future grid. Oh. Uh, I don't see baseload in a future grid. I see everything working together in a much more tightly coupled, integrated way. The grid itself is going to have to transform. It's going to be much more interconnected, uh, smarter. Uh, and that means sensors at all levels, in the home, in cars, cars talking to the grid, cars talking to your home. So highly connected. But also, I like to say that the future energy system is going to be a lot of nuclear and a lot of renewables. Energy storage is obviously a, an important topic that a lot of us in the industry are, are focused on. What do you think the future of that is? How does that fit into the bigger picture um, of our energy mix? I think the utilities would tell you that's the holy grail to, to high renewable penetration. We have to figure out how to store renewable energy for long periods when the sun doesn't shine, the wind doesn't blow, so to speak. Uh, the key with that is the research there is really to reduce cost, make it economic, to go to utility scale. When I talk about a lot of nuclear and auto renewables, there will be a lot of batteries, yeah. a lot of storage on the grid. Yeah. So how does nuclear work with that? Because you can imagine nuclear serving in many respects like a peaker, like a natural gas peaker, fire up, fire down, follow load. But how does that work with storage on the grid along with renewables? Those are, those are interesting technical questions mm -hmm. that we're, we're addressing. So when I come visit the lab, uh, where are you going to tell me to go eat? Any good restaurants? Oh, am I allowed to tell you which my favorite restaurants are? I would love to hear yeah, what your yeah, favorite yeah. restaurants are. So I have two. Uh, shameless plug. So the Copper Rill, which is right on the river. Yeah, OK. So when you come see me, let's go there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another one out my, by my, my house called The Cellar. And both are great. Yeah, they, they have an Idaho feel, Yeah, but they're they're great. They're great restaurants. Yeah. I heard there's wine in Idaho as well. Quite good wine and really good. Is it quite good? I like it. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Nice this to be with you. Great. It's nice yeah. to be with you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.